Welcome back to this lovely evening on Summit Railway. Today we are doing kind of a night shift. I'm working in my signal box as you can tell. I've set up a light and I've read some of your comments. All of you wanted to see my station lights, the platform lights uh, in action. And in order to do so, we need to fix the power supply. This wire down here supplies the lights and now we need to install a power supply inside this box. And we are going to do some other stuff as well, so let's get right to it. Okay, before we are going to do anything in here, I want to protect those clamps. Since I need to drill up here, uh, I don't want some uh, stuff falling inside them. So I simply will use this piece and some tape. And just like that, I made sure nothing can get inside of those clamps. What you can see right here are all the feed wires for the individual track sections. We've got 14 track sections right here and one common uh, wire which is feeding the opposite track. To tie all of those together, I've purchased some clamps like this one for the common and those big clamps for all the individual track sections. This clamp is the easiest to install. It will fit right here. And just like that, it is installed. Then strip the wire. And now I'm able to simply feed this inside here and that's done. I used a bunch of those clamps to temporarily tie those feed wires together so I would be able to run some trains but now that I have the legitimate clamps which I'm going to install as the next step we can disassemble all of that. There will be mounted a display up in this box which will show the switches, the signals and if a track is occupied or not. And that brings me down to those 14 wires which uh, are the different track sections. And the information for the signal box or the display up here will be gathered at this point and there will be a, a spool around this wire, each wire I should say, and it will detect if any current is flowing through this wire or if it's not. And that determines if the track sections are occupied or not. For that reason I've built this contraption. It's a piece of wood with 14 holes in it and it will make sure that those wires run straight and make the spool work. All right, now we can go ahead and feed those wires through the hole. Like so. And as you can tell, we now got a straight run of each wire and they are a even distance apart which is important when I have mounted those spools on each wire they won't interfere each other. 
So let's finish it up. This is what it looks all said and done. The wires are straight and parallel to each other, ready to mount the spools, which will detect the current flowing and therefore determining if the track is occupied or not. Those casings will help me distribute the wiring from down here to all the decoders and some other stuff which will be mounted up here on this plate. With that out of the way we can start mounting this bracket which then will hold the distri distribution clamp. So this clamp will go like this I will start with the shortest wires first Alright, that's done and looking pretty good. I like it. Next up is the star of the show for today. It's a DC-DC converter. You can feed in 9 to 36 volt DC input and you can get out 15 volts at 4 amps. That's what I will need to power my uh, platform lighting and all the other stuff along the station area. Next to the DC converter I will mount a second set of those clamps and those will be distributing the 24 volt DC uh, power from the main power supply which is mounted in my garage. To clarify the setup we've got DCC power 24 volts from the digital central station this is the minus this is the plus and then we've got 24 volts clean DC power right from the um, power supply and this will power for example the display the computer the decoders which have to be mounted and this DC converter so 24 volts DC power going in 15 volts DC power going out to power, for example, the lights in the station area, which are those clamps. The DC converter is hooked up on the outbound side. We've got the wiring go down across here and then feed into the main outbound wire. 
that is hook up, hooked up to the station area, which is completely dark at the moment. To power up the DC converter, I need to hook up a temporary power supply since my signal box hasn't been hooked up to the main power supply at this point. And that looks a bit like this. We've got a 24 volt power supply wired to the DC converter and then I've disconnected the outbound wiring uh, to make sure that the outbound voltage is right before I connect all the lights and LEDs and destroy something. So we've got an input voltage of 24.1, which is perfectly fine. And then we've got an output voltage, let's see, 15.03, that's perfectly fine. So now the interesting part begins. Let's see if the station lights will power up. I've disconnected the power supply and then I've hooked up the outbound clamps to the station area. And now the plan is to set you guys up on a tripod in the station area and I will switch on the power supply and then we will see the station light up for the very first time. If that doesn't look amazing, I don't know what is. We've got a signal box with outside and indoor lights, followed by two amazing looking platforms with my scratch built lanterns and this massive station building, which as of today has four outside lanterns and some indoor lights. The top of the water tower is also in a nice decent light and down here we've got the locomotive shed which has indoor and outdoor lights as well. Now imagine that the signals will be in operation soon and they will shine a nice light across the station area as well. What I haven't installed just yet are a bunch of track lights which will be installed in between some tracks to light up uh, certain points like switches and not to forget the freight area which is to the right of the signal box which is coming into the picture right now and there will be another building and some more lights and this will look amazing when it's done. <laughs> 